All right, everybody have a seat. Oh, hot fire, hot fire. Would you want to sit in the middle? No. We're, oh, I'm being sandwiched. <laughs> I'm being sandwiched by Novacraft. Well, we're at Fanshawe Conservation Area Campground. Having a fire, we're gonna have a whiskey fireside chat. All right. First of all, who I have here, I have Tim, uh, the past owner of Novacraft, the old guy. And we have Chris, the new owner, the younger guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got a choice here. I could, look at this. Oh, Irish whiskey. Yeah, I know. I didn't bring scotch. That's all right. Because, you know, I don't really know Chris yet. What would you like? I'll try this one. Yeah? All right. So, I'll get a cup for you. There you go. Thank you. And a cup for me. I just didn't know what you could handle it. I'll just take the bottle. <laughs> I'm not sure if he can handle it. I'm, I'm, no, oh, I see. I'm yeah. the younger yeah. guy. But he just started. I'm still of age. Yeah. No, he, did, he just started this big, huge company that you built from the ground up. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to ask you, uh, Tim. Sure. Uh, so the idea is like now you've sold the company, you've moved on, and you just wanted to retire. Is that it? Uh, yeah, well, I'm uh, 68 years old, so there's... Uh, really? I didn't know you were 68. And, uh, you know, I'd like to go paddling a little more than I've been doing in the past. Uh, seems like whenever it's a good time to paddle, we're just busier than hell and making boats for everybody else to go paddling, so... Yeah, that's good, because you used to yeah. paddle a lot, right? Yeah, well, more. Yeah. 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 yeah, I never really paddled before I had Novacraft. Now, is this a new thing, or have you been thinking about this for a few years now? Or it took uh, over a year, but yeah, yeah, we've been working up to it for sure. And yeah. did, it did it surprise the staff? They were, were they in shock, or they were like, "Yay, he's gone! <laughs> the wicked witch is gone!" When I first started, and uh, I don't know, it's just really easygoing guy. Uh, doesn't take it too seriously, but at the same time, you know, he uh, he really wanted the, the best kind of canoes that we could build. So. Yeah, Tim, Tim is great. He's uh, always willing to come back in the back and work with us, work on boats. I've never really had an owner of a company who's like that, you know. He's pretty down to earth and pretty, pretty relaxed. Um, he never really gets worked up about too much, but he definitely has the best interests of his employees and the company in mind. The running question is, do you actually find him attractive? Um, I don't know, I can't really say that though, because that's... Did you find him a very attractive man? I personally, would, he'd wear his hair just one way and no, not no, I can't say I did, no. But he's a good guy, yeah. He's a bit too old for me, but uh, maybe 20 years ago, maybe, yeah. <laughs> Do you find Tim attractive? Somewhat. Yeah, <laughs> so, all depends on the day or? Yeah, yeah. depends on what he's wearing. <laughs> just a really nice guy. Yeah, totally. You know, I've I've made it uh, made sure that the you know the key people at the sh at the shop know what's going on. So you know, I I think people have known for the last three or four years that it was being positioned or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. certainly over the last year, like we told people when we were listing it, and okay. when we had somebody interested. And yeah. So well, that's good. Everybody, that's good. yeah, because you don't want to just walk in one day and go, hey. I'm out of here. Here he is. Yeah, you just know, throw, throw them not, to the wolves, right? Oh good. no! It's not good for uh, company longevity and pe you know, no. people like to be informed. So well, be no across always been like that too, right? Uh, uh, you got to know everybody and everybody's yep. all connected. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, we try to be like that. Yeah, for sure. Look, look oh, what I yeah. got. Look what I got. Is this happy camper coasters? Whoa! I need a little one. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. cheers! All right, cheers. Here's to uh, Novacraft, past mm. and future. See, that's not bad. It's different. That's good. Yeah. I got a wee bit of an Irish accent after drinking that. I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> Can I have some more, please? <laughs> uh, so, Chris, so did all of a sudden you read something in the newspaper, like business for sale, or what happened? No, I was looking for a business to buy, not specifically in this industry. I've been in a number of different industries, and I, I, I looked at probably half a dozen businesses up and down and this one came across the uh, the wire as being up for sale but but it was it was confidential Novacraft wasn't named 
and uh, I talked to the broker and the broker said Are you interested in something like this it was a sporting goods company and I said no and then he said but they make canoes and I said yes so it was very exciting to uh, to be introduced to, to the company and I met Tim uh, and that sort of piqued my interest between the, the product and, and meeting Tim so okay. that, uh, that got the ball rolling so if I had to characterize both of you um, I've known you for quite a while you basically are hands-on this is the way it's done I make canoes since I was a wee young lad move aside I'll show you how it's done mm -hmm. um, and then you are more of a manager coming in to sort of gather everybody around and keep the business going. That's right. Uh, yeah, I mean, business is my background. I'm an accountant by trade, but uh, I enjoy canoeing. I do like to do hands-on, but I'll, I'll have to learn from Tim how to do some of that before he goes paddling into the horizon. Well, if you ask Tim, he'd probably tell you it's not really crucial that you know uh, how to make a canoe, like the, to run, run the business. I mean, the guys in the back, Oh yeah, and now the staff are excellent. Yeah, they yeah. even you know I walk out in the shop and it's kind of like, well, what are you doing out here? You know, what do you want? <laughs> I can get that for you. No, just leave that. I can do that. Yeah. So it's, yeah, they're uh, they're happy to do it and they're really proud of what they're building and uh, I think it's great. Yeah. Well, that's good. And that's probably where the uh, you know the business is uh, such a size that it needs more. Op operational management and stuff like that which was never particularly my strong suit so i think it's a really good fit going forward yeah. that's cool now uh yeah. now the idea of canoeing is skyrocketing right um do you know why because it's an awesome thing to do well we all know it's an awesome thing like we've been doing it for years and, and back in the time it was it was skyrocketing as well and then yeah. we had to change over from right. kayaking more to yeah. canoeing uh uh, but yeah, so if you think about it, you're just finishing up and about to retire and have fun, mm -hmm. and he's going into the you know nightmarish world of, of, <laughs> of management. Um, what would you say to him about what has happened from when when you started the canoe life? Well, yeah, I think um, well when when we first got into it, people were really into tripping and uh, going on ten day canoe trips, whereas now it's more. Uh, a little more instant gratification. People are mostly going out for day trips and maybe, turn, you know, tying it in with uh, glamping and uh, you know, B and B to B and B type paddling and things like that. But um, I think, like for a family activity, like kayaking and everything's great for a solitary sport where you're out on your own and stuff. But for a family, and I think that's what's happened. A lot of people that got into kayaking. Um, you know, now they've had, they're having children and they want to still get out on the water and you can't beat a canoe for getting the whole family out on the water. It is really interesting, like, uh, like in, not that I'm old, but I'm, I'm around for a long time and just to see the changes. I mean, we went from the, the Tilly Hat Syndrome. I remember going to, to Peterborough and I had a Kevlar canoe and they called it the potato ship boat and they actually didn't even want me to join the, the canoe club because uh, they're all cedar canvas canoes, right? Yeah. Uh, then kayakers started and they actually were told not to join the club. You know, they were, you know, there's the door, yeah. um, to the point now that actually it's all mixed matched and in one sense it's a good time for you to, to, to because canoeing isn't on the downward spiral, uh, where, you know, ten, 10 years ago people would even tell me that canoeing is dead, that's right. it, and then, yeah. no it's not. The idea of actually uh, canoeists though too going on 10 days instead of 2 days, uh, that, that will change eventually because those people who are going 2 days are eventually going to yeah. want to go 10 days. Yeah, as their skill level develops and they get more comfortable being outside. And yeah, don't yeah. want to do it for longer, for sure. What's the one solid memory you remember of being part and growing part of Milk Club? Holy cow. No pressure, Tim. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's kind of interesting how it happened that we ended up buying this company. Uh, uh, my wife's an occupational therapist and she was offered a job back teaching at Western. We were out in Calgary for 11 years. And uh, so she always wanted to do that. So came back and we were going to try it for a year. And the deal was I'm supposed to stay home and look after the kids. And and, uh, and uh, I'd always had my own business since I was 23 years old. So by the summer was fun because with the kids, you, you know, go camping and fishing and do whatever you want. But then school came around and I was like bouncing off the walls. So we went on a boys canoe trip and um, up on the French River. And we're uh, sitting right at uh, 
Blue Chute. There's a little campsite right beside Blue Chute on the French River. And uh, the whiskey was involved. I'm not it's sure. always about whiskey. I'm not, I'm not sure we had glasses though. <laughs> you know, but, but anyway, you know, the, it was mentioned, oh, uh, we know this canoe company's for sale out in Glanworth, south of London there. And we make pretty good canoes, but it's pretty disorganized or whatever. And uh, so I had lots of time and I checked it out. And, yeah, and so the three of us ended up buying my brother-in-law Pat and his partner Zoltan and they were really into canoeing being in Ontario and we were more into canoeing or backpacking and climbing and stuff oh, the really? time we spent out west but uh, yeah when you get a canoe company you sure get into canoeing in a hurry <laughs> for some of the experiences like uh, canoeing with my own family our two young boys when they were growing up like we'd go on uh, 10 day canoe trips up north in the summertime and stuff and it was just you know some of the best days of my life for sure that's fantastic yeah yeah yeah, yeah. now look at the changes though i mean you were probably during the days of fiberglass yeah we started out three well, keeler did you have a three keeler we, fiberglass oh well, we have we still have some molds for some uh, um, uh cargo canoes or uh, oh yeah square stern canoes and stuff like that but ken was really into uh racing marathon canoe racing so he was right up there there's a he always contended that he made uh the first kevlar canoes ever like he beat uh mad river like the guy from dupont he came got some uh kevlar from dupont and they uh, he sh he figured it out how to build kevlar canoes and then the guy from dupont came and see what he was doing and then took that what ken was doing and gave it to Mad River down in the States and then Mad River said they were the first ones to build Kevlar canoes. You thought it was going to be a very easy <laughs> business. Like, there would be no canoe politics involved at all, but, no business so when, savvy. No. So when I took it, when we took it over, it was, uh, you know, we we're very much into high-end composite canoes, you know, and then it branched out into plastics and stuff like that. And then after uh, Royal X went away, then it kind of came around full circle again, back into composites with our tough stuff, and uh -huh. things like that. But it's always been uh, very innovative as far as composite canoes are concerned. So you yeah. did have to change too, because you think about it, when when the whole uh, uh, you had, had to create that tough stuff. Did you yep. really panic at that point? Uh, panic is almost a good word, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That was, it was right around the time when we were thinking, okay, we're going to, you know, tidy this up and move on. And then 75% oh, really? of your business, uh, you got a call from the sales manager one day, oh, just to let you know, uh, we're, you know, six months, we're not going to be making uh, Royal X anymore. And it's 75% of your business. So you know, <laughs> don't say this in front of Chris. It's too late. It's too late. Yeah, I signed it's the too check. Late. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, but you know, this, what do they say? Necessity is the father of invention, or mother, or whatever. Yeah, you always but, have to change up. You know, right? you got. So yeah, we got out there and saw what was possible, and we came across this material. And in a lot of ways, it's better than Royal X, and in some ways, it's not as good, but it's a uh, it's an excellent material. So, and you, know, you made it work. And then we right? made it work, yeah, for sure, yeah. 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 That, that's the thing, like, if I listen to the people back in the day where, oh, canoeing is dead, you're wasting your time talking to people, I'm not sure why you're doing this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, then if I listen to them? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'd be doing. I'd be probably buying a, a canoe company or something. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, you think about it, what was the one, like, you talk about the, the stress times, whatever, but what mm -hmm. was the, of all the time, what was the time when you just saw, had this huge uh, flux of, of paddlers? Was it during the water walker idea, the, the Bill Mason days, or...? Yeah, I think back in the 80s and early 90s, it was... Like, we'd go, we'd go to a show and, you'd, you know, you'd be selling canoes every day. You know, and people would be walking in, you know, cash in their pockets. And you'd be going out of the show with, you know, your jeans are filled with $100 bills and stuff like that. It's just... It's, and everybody was totally into canoeing and uh, they were really interested. And again, it's people doing big trips and things like that. Yeah. And that, you know, with the advent of the kayak, that really dropped off. But then that also left us an opportunity because all the really big companies were, you know, just driving their canoe lines into the ground and there wasn't 
you can you know, build. there was a real dearth of quality yeah. canoes can available. So yeah, and we couldn't keep up with them on the investment side of it to to do that. So we say, okay, well, we'll stick with canoes and we'll do that. We'll do it better than everybody else. So it's it, interesting, is uh, because um, uh, when I asked you what canoe you're going to paddle away with in your retirement and your first trip with your wife, and you said the Kranje. Yeah. Right. And. Um, and I, I've always liked the Prospector. We know each other for yep. years, right? I think I've driven you nuts through the years because <laughs> you're, oh, Kevin, I have a new model out. I like the Prospector, please. <laughs> oh, no, no, you gotta try this. No, I like the Prospector, please. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the na main uh, boat design that you're selling throughout, oh, throughout like the years? Oh, like a 16 foot Prospector. It still like, is. Uh, like a, yeah. yeah. If uh, Chris can come up with a, another model that sells as well as a 16 foot Prospector, he'll be a rich man. Yeah. Now, was that is that because <laughs> the, the Bill Mason, uh, era or or not it's yeah it, it, that's where it certainly where it all got started but it's uh you know people the prospector is such a good compromise of all the things that you want a canoe to do um and the any other designs that come out uh it's always like more specific than the prospector is yeah and so people are people are just comfortable in that type of design it's nice and deep it's nice and full in the end so there's room for the bow paddler to sit and, you know they feel safe up there the yeah the boat's pretty stable it's it's not a slug in the water um, but all the things that you can all the things you do to improve on any of those other aspects they always take away from something and then an all-around canoe, or you just can't beat a prospect. Yeah, for the all-around canoe. I think that's yeah. why I always chose it. Like, yeah. like I, I have a, a, a Bob Special, I have a Kranje, in fact, the flag canoe. That, right. oh, you don't know that story. The, <laughs> the making of the flag canoe. Yeah. Do you that remember that? that? Oh, I mean, yeah, that, that was that great. Is not, yeah. That's not a decal. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you did it. You embedded oh, yeah. the we, design in there. Yeah. We had this uh, fellow, Jerry. Uh, unfortunately, he's passed away now, but he was... He was uh, a great builder. Oh, he, oh, was, man, he was... Like, great. he was an amazing guy. He was... He came over from Ireland when he was 14. And by the way, that's why. By the way, God, that's why he's good. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, well, Joe, you're, you're empty. Which one, which one we're having? Oh, yeah. Oh, and, sorry. Uh, yeah. Chris, the new owner. But he could he do... Wants another drink. I need a drink for this. He could do anything with uh, Jelko. And uh, he had so much experience in, in uh, fiberglassing. But, and he, he built that, did the Jelko work on that canoe. But it's just, it's just amazing. Like, he... You know anybody can mask it and everything, but he would know exactly the right down to the second when you have peel that out that the yeah. the you know the edges don't break on the gel coat. And, yeah, you know everything stays really crisp and stuff. He was a incredible builder. Yeah. Well, the great story about that was uh, James Raffin uh, at the Canoe Museum at the time said, Kevin, we're going to create this thing called uh, Paddle uh, Day or Oh yeah, the National National Canoe, National Canoe, National Canoe, Canoe Day. Day. Yeah. yeah. And uh, great, fantastic. Can you help us with some media? I went, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get you on TV, no problem. So I went to Nova Graham to Tim. I go, you need to make me a canoe that's just bizarre, like something like Super Dave Osborne would have. And you did, like to see it. It's, mm -hmm. it's just amazing. So I showed up the canoe museum. It wasn't James. James was the way to go, Kevin. But there were some yeah. other people that were very traditional in one sense. And they're like, that's not a canoe. And I went, it is to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was on eight morning shows in four days. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was fun. And no, and then nice like too. our uh, rapport graphics got right on the design of it and stuff. And yeah, laid, laid out a really nice design. And you yeah, had that was the, a great project. Yeah. We also had the university kids, uh, or um, not kids, college. But, yeah, yeah. The, the, students. Oh yeah, yeah. The, their students. Yep. They made up yep. different designs and everything yep. else. And, yeah, yeah that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Never a dull yeah. moment. No. Yeah. Got to keep moving. So, uh, any last words, Chris? Uh, you know, I, I know you. You know, be, you've been taking up the whole interview. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. I'm sorry about Tim that. Tim hasn't got anything. <laughs> sorry about it. He said he was retiring, but he just keeps he's, keeps poking well, is back that what, in. Is that, that's going on. Does he still hang around the show? Oh, shop? he's there all the time. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh yeah. You know why? I, I made the mistake of buying lunch every day. So, so no, he yeah. comes around for the food. Free, free food. <laughs> Well, you get you're on a fixed income, eh? Like so, <laughs> oh, stuff like man. that makes a big difference. <laughs> That's just sad, Tim. Yeah. That's just sad. You're gonna be you're gonna be one of those people walking around the mall in the morning doing your exercises. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so I'm not. not knocking those people that do that. <laughs> so this is this is good news. Um, and it's funny, you know, that you would think the canoe world is 
uh, this nice, pleasant people that all look like going uh, canoeing, but it's still a business. And what happened at Canoe Copia, right? And, and I think people will curse this for me, but I, I think it's something that we should discuss. There was somebody going around Canoe Copia saying that you guys were, were closing the doors, you're shutting the doors. I went, no, he's selling it because he wants to retire. And like, that's just wrong. Yeah. Me. Like, I hope St. Yeah. Peter has a word with that person up, up in the gates, for heaven's <laughs> sakes. But uh, but no no pressure at all. But <laughs> right. None but, whatsoever. But there is, there is a, you can, you know, history you've had in the canoe world, you can say that there's there's some moments where you're like, roll your eyes up, right? Yeah, there is. But that's one thing I, great about the industry. Like, people are mostly passionate about it. And they, uh, they're not in it for... Um, well, like everybody needs to live and everybody needs to make money, but they're not in it because they're going to want to set the world on fire and make $20 million selling boats and things like that. Um, you should so, uh, up. Generally, generally. <laughs> <laughs> it's all too, it's pretty, all too I'm late. I'm pretty sure he'd be happy with 10. I, like, <laughs> you told me that I'd be canoeing more too. And <laughs> Before I signed, now I but can now see I won't working. be canoeing more. I'll be making canoes so he can canoe more. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, it's a great business to be going on. I, I told that story basically because things do happen, right? And yeah, you, oh, and yeah. you get your uh, your backup for it, whatever. But in overall, I wouldn't be doing the stuff I do if it wasn't for Like, you think about all the... Like, I go a whole big tour presenting every spring. And I've been doing it for years. And it's all done by sponsors. And then the other night, I just said, you know, they're not really my sponsors. They're my friends. Like, I've known yep. them for years. Mm -hmm. And they yep. just want me to keep people going out so they can keep the business going. And it's yep. as simple as that. Right. And it's one of the nicest, easiest things to say to an audience. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I know all these people. They're really, they're really nice. They help me out. They're helping you out, getting out in the water. Because yep. we don't get people out in the water canoeing. We can kiss wilderness goodbye. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. No pressure. But if wilderness I'll is depleted, it it's Chris's fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work hard at it. <laughs> well, cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.